Mariah Davis. Hi, Mariah. Hey, John. Mariah Davis of Oakview Insurance. Uh, Oakview Insurance, where are you located at? Uh, so we're in Yuba City. We're directly across from the Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply? Yeah. Oh, they got some cool go-karts that they used to have over there. <laughs> <laughs> and they always have something fun going on in their parking lot. They certainly do. And uh, Oakview Insurance, uh, what, what kind of an insurance company, uh, what, what services do you offer? Yeah, place? so we're an independent insurance agency, which basically means we work with multiple different companies. We're not tied yeah. to, to any one specific insurance company mm -hmm. um, and we do kind of your standard insurance so your auto home farm commercial work comp flood mm -hmm. we're doing a ton of high fire uh, homeowners insurance right now that's uh, yeah. a really big thing going on in especially northern california yeah. uh, for any of the folks that are in the hills tell me about flood insurance real quick and <laughs> Yeah, does it take a while to kick in? Is it like 30 days? Is that what it was? So if you are purchasing it through the National Flood Insurance Program, yeah. yes. Okay. Typically, there's a 30-day uh, wait. It does depend if you are, say, purchasing this property, and this mm -hmm. is your first opportunity to buy the flood insurance. Yeah. Uh, we can get it for no wait. Sometimes if it's lender required, there may be no wait as well. And then you also have private flood insurance companies who can do like a five-day wait or a 10-day wait. So there are some other options out there. I wasn't aware of pro private companies did that because it's such a uh, high liability thing. It, it is. So they're picky about where they're taking. Um, does it have to be in a non-flood plain zone and things like that? It, it doesn't. So we, we just helped some folks out where the National Flood Insurance Program was just way too expensive. It was like yeah. $2,500, and we were able to get it through a private flood insurance company for about 900 Oh, that's quite So uh, there's options. Um, yeah. it, that's just one of those benefits of when we work with so many different companies. We, yeah. we can check them out and see what's going to be best for that specific home in this that specific situation. Mariah Davis, let's get to know you real quick all because right. this is all part of the program, <laughs> uh, getting to know people in our community. Uh, where are you from? Yeah, I, I'm from Yuba City, Marysville, uh, born and raised. What's so, cool? What's cool? Um, so I graduated from Sutter, okay. even though I, my parents and my family live out in Hallwood. So I, I did the commute. My mom was a teacher for 30 plus years at Sutter. Well, Sutter seems to have this reputation of being the, the premier high school in the area uh, because of all the programs and activities. Did yeah. you find that to be? I mean, I'm probably a little biased yeah. just since I, I was a, a teacher's kid, but um, <clears throat> I, I really enjoyed my, my time out at Sutter. Sutter. Shop? Sutter, uh, uh, Sutter Cut. Sutter Cut, that's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I always mess that up for some oh. reason. And I always like to say that I, when I graduated from Live Oak High School, uh, we won one football that game that year. And we beat Sutter at their homecoming, so. Well, it's it's good to know that, <laughs> that stuck with you, John. <laughs> so one thing I, you know, you win one game. It I'm has to be good. Uh, so you went to Sutter. Um, uh, w how did your uh, adult life begin? Yeah, so um, I had no idea what I was going to be doing with, with my life. Um, yeah. Uh, my degree from Sac State is in social science, so that's kind of the whatever degree. Yeah, um, it's one of those it's liberal a, arts things. Yes, yeah. yes. It's a mishmash of all sorts of things, basically. You didn't know what you wanted to do, but but here's your degree. It was either that or a bar barista or something. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I just fell into yeah. insurance. Uh, I, I got into um, the industry when I was 22. Wow, that's um, awesome. So my, my dad was offered a contract through uh, farmer's insurance and yeah. somehow I managed to talk my way into also getting a contract yeah. so I, I spent four years with them and then I, I opened Oakview Insurance and went independent. I um in fact mine is uh, farmers yeah, <laughs> what it yeah. is. Uh, but uh, let's see uh, Keith Anthony I think is uh, his name. Keith is a great guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's uh, let's talk about what is what's in the insurance industry right now what are people are uh, pe people concerned about uh, uh, besides the fire? Definitely the high fire so folks that are in areas that that are a higher risk, um, which is kind of a, a moving line, depending yeah. on what insurance company we're working with, what scores, what information that they have out there. Um, so we are seeing a lot of non-renewals. So we have insurance companies deciding that they're not going to be writing in certain areas. Um, so we're getting tons of calls for that. Do you did you have any uh, clients up in the Paradise area? We did have a few. Uh, yeah. We weren't we didn't write much in that area, so it yeah. wasn't too bad. But we had four total losses. So so they were able to help them out and get back on their feet. And yep, they're already starting to build up there. Uh, they are, they I'm are, impressed. but it, it's always a, a long process, especially when insurance companies are dealing with as many claims. Well, as, as an they agent, were. as an agent, this is where you, that's. 
instances like that was where you shine, isn't it? That, that's exactly. I mean, we were calling clients as soon as we can, yeah. email, um, you know, just letting them know that, that we were here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're ready to help as soon as you're, you're ready to let us know. And we had a, a few people call you know, the, the Friday after it broke out ready to go and others we had to track down do you, do you think the prevalence of hit and run drivers right now is because of they don't have insurance i don't <clears> know <throat> if it's that they they don't have insurance or they're like afraid to, to use it um we just had our my office manager just went through that somebody rear-ended her and took off and it was dark enough that she couldn't make out the license plate yeah. um you know that really hurts all of us that do carry the insurance yes it does because we're continuing to make claims and as we make more claims in this area, we're going to see that our auto insurance rates go up across all of the companies. Especially if you only have PL and PD, right? Well, <laughs> then you're just out of pocket. Yeah. So you've got got that. But it, yeah, it's falling back on your personal insurance if you have physical damage coverage. And uh, that just hurts if you start to see all of our rates go up because we're having more and more of, of these sorts of accidents. It, it's yeah. going to come back to bite the people that are actually carrying the insurance, and that's the worst part of it. I see you got a nice little rock on your finger there. Oh, well, we'll oh, see. Thank uh, you, you. You're married. What's your husband's name? Uh, my husband's name is Scott. Okay. Uh, uh, got any kids? I do. I have a two-year-old named Reagan. Two-year-old? You, you don't look like, I mean, you look like you've got plenty of sleep. <laughs> I, I have a good sleeper. We did get lucky on that. <laughs> okay. full, full of all kinds of spunk, but a good, a good sleeper. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, let's talk about uh, your involvement in your the Flag Day event. Now, I misspoke. Uh, next Thursday is not Flag Day. It's, uh, it's the following day. It's going to be Friday, yep. Yeah. So we, we have this event the day before because um, it's also going to be a chamber after hours event. Okay. And they tend to, to do those events on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. um, so the event is anybody who has a flag that needs to be retired and would like to pick up a new one, they mm -hmm. can stop by our office uh, on Thursday at the 13th from 5 to 7 p.m. Um, we will collect that flag and have it properly disposed of, and then they'll get a free uh, three foot by five foot outdoor American flag. Um, That's a pretty big flag. I was, yeah. I was just going to ask you, is this some little... Like, yeah, no, it, it's thing? not like the, the little little Hand one that we'd hand to the kids. Parades. We have those, um, but, yeah. but those are for the kids. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it is a legitimate flag. I mean, we, we feel like this is a blessing to the community. It's just a way to give back. Um, I was going to ask you why. Yeah, it's, it's just the, the patriotic and thing to do and a great thing to give back to our community. <laughs> I, I'm from here. I live and work here. Anything that I can do to make our community better, there's a lot, I'm there's, happy to be a part of. There's a higher percentage of veterans in this area than other places. You know, it's it's bizarre to, to, to understand and know that less than 1% of the America's population ever serve in the military. I didn't know it was that low. Less than 1%. And it's, it's uh, but not here. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we've got, uh, especially with Beal back mm -hmm. there. But uh, I, I was in the Air Force. <laughs> we've yeah. got a lot of Army people as well. And, and I know we've got some Marines. we got uh, we got people like uh, Chase Marta, who mm -hmm. was, I think he was in the uh, Marines. He passed away mm -hmm. uh, in Yuba City. I think it was 2012. Yeah, it it's, been, it's been a while, but I remember the turnout for that. Yeah, the turnout. And I see a lot of flags and things like that at yeah. that, that, that time. It just brings out... Uh, the patriotism. Obviously, you're a patriotic American. It, that, that's, you know, grew, grew up with that. Um, <clears throat> and my father served in the military as well. We have multiple family members that have. Um, I am I just, I'm probably growing up in this area, too, you know, had, had a strong influence on that. We, we're patriotic area. The Northern California is, in, in general, I, I find. You know, we're, we're pretty pro-America, pro-military. You know, I'm just I'm putting two and two together and looking at you. You probably served. <clears throat> you probably were, went to high school with Chase, didn't you? Uh, I think he. Well, little, I know he's a Yuba City guy. Uh, yeah, and I I graduated a little further back. So I'm not going to ask your age. She looks, honest to goodness, she looks 21, 22 years old. If you're on Facebook, you'll know exactly what, I, what I'm talking about. I, I appreciate that, <clears throat> Sean. <clears throat> well, it, what I, it's it's not just looks. It's it's um, attitude. I guess is the word I'm looking for. Do you do you find yourself being a um, a role model for people people your age? Gosh, I I don't know role model. I mean, we we still seek out you know, business mentors and, and other role models, but um, I I help where I can yeah. um, with, with other business folks if there's something that I can suggest or. Do you consider yourself a millennial? 
Are Not you? really, but I. Gen Xer. I, I, I'm a, I'm a schmishmillennial. I'm I'm stuck in the middle. Okay. I, I'm right on the cusp of being a millennial and a Gen X. So okay. I don't really fit in, in either. Technology was coming in, but it wasn't the, the same yeah. as the the younger millennials. But I I, it wasn't as far back. <laughs> I know what you mean. So. I'm a, uh, I was born the last year of the baby boomers. Mm -hmm. I'm considered a baby boomer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <so> weird. <laughs> but but you, you may not not yeah. feel it and don't quite you know identify with the. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with the uh, with the older <laughs> folks, um, I, I want to ask you a little bit more about the flag day yeah. and how they retire the flags. Do you are you familiar with the process? I, I am. So what we do is um, we pass them off to the VFW to, to handle that side. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a really neat process. We've tried to, to talk to the Boy Scouts about doing yeah. it, um, and we haven't been able to reach someone who's been willing to do the amount of flags that we yeah. end up with. How so if anybody out there has a contact for you know, the Boy Scouts that want to retire you know, a, a large amount of flags, that, that'd be great uh, for future years. But um, you last said year, a large amount. How many? Last, last year we retired, I believe, 85. Wow. So, um, yeah, we, we get quite a... Quite yeah. a good turnout for it. Um, we have 125 new flags to give out this year, um, and, and it's completely free. That's something that we really stress because I think a lot of people wonder, well... I can't see how somebody <laughs> would charge to have a flag retired. No, well, and for the new one. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people think, well, well a I... replacement, yeah, I see. Yeah, uh, you, you don't need to give me any of your information. Um, I think a lot of times people walk up and, you know, we hand them the flag, we invite them to have, you know, some food and drinks, mm -hmm. and they have this look on their face like, that's it? Good. Good. I don't have to, like, sign something or, like, give you my yeah. contact information. No, I, th it, it's truly a free community event. Well, we need to stress where you're at again, then. Yeah. How, do you get to, how do you get to your business? Uh, yeah, so um, we are right across from the Tractor Supply on Sierra Avenue. Um, you'll see it's building 1650, and okay. we're Suite 202, but if you stop by, you'll see we're going to be right in front. So as soon as you turn down Sierra Avenue, you'll see us. Look for the flags. I'm uh, sure yes. you're going to have some American flags out. Yes, <laughs> yes, we will. Okay. <laughs> What, I gotta ask you, what do you enjoy l most about living in the Yuba Sutter area? I think it's the people. Mm -hmm. and people are friendly. They care. They care about their neighbors. Um, I, you know, we have the opportunity to be involved in a lot of you know the business community and charity communities. And people mm -hmm. here have a really big heart. I, it is amazing to me the amount of giving that this community does. When the need is real, they they do mm -hmm. come out. I, I, they do, and you know that was one thing. Watching the campfire, watching yeah. the response from our community, because it, it could have been easy to be like, uh, it, I mean, technically, Paradise is forty-five minutes away. It didn't happen in the Yuba Sutter community. Technically, uh, it did. It, it did, but I think it would have been easy for some folks to turn a blind eye yeah. or just to kind of say, "Not my problem." And that did not happen. Uh, and I was so impressed with our community. With all the uh, donations that were made, I mean, Gosh. they opened up the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. I think people are still living over there. I'm not uh, quite they, sure. they are, and I, I hope people don't. Don't start to forget that there there's still folks that are struggling well, because of that. With all the trucks coming through town, <laughs> we're not going to be able to forget anytime soon. I should just pass some of those. So. But it's nice to see that people aren't getting as upset as they nor might normally with the increased traffic. Uh, yeah. It's realizing it's uh, but it, it has to be done. I mean, there's millions of millions of pounds or acre feet of stuff that has to be removed. And it, it's got got to be removed and it's got to go somewhere. So. Okay. Yeah. What what is some of the, I got to ask you what's the, being an independent insurance agent? Mm -hmm. What's the strangest thing you've ever insured? Oh gosh. <laughs> like somebody's toe or something? Uh, no, we, we stay out of the body part market. Although they, you, you can you can do it. Uh, it's it's a specialty uh, niche for that. <laughs> Gosh, I'm trying to think. I, we we have our occasional hoarder homes or things that that yeah. show up that we we need to do, but. Most of it's pretty standard. Standard. What about yeah. claims? I mean, uh, uh, you probably had a uh, like a Darwin Award winner or something <laughs> like that. Um, no, I I can't think of any offhand that yeah. are standing out. Uh, mostly, we do a lot of education with folks on when it's a good idea to turn in a homeowner's insurance claim and when it's not. Um, I think a lot of people think it's kind of like medical insurance. Like, oh, I'm just going to turn in everything. I'm going to, like, meet my deductible and do this. 
It's not. No. Um, so we get a lot of, like, my water heater stopped working or my stove stopped working. And we just have to explain the things that are typically not covered by homeowner's insurance. And you have a deductible that you have to pay out before those sorts of things would even ap attempt to apply. Yeah. And uh, usually people are carrying a you know, 1000 to $2,500 deductible. That's not going to take care of your stuff. Not going to take care of your refrigerator. I mean, I've seen some expensive ones, but that's... <laughs> yeah, and then you have to deal with the possibility of a surcharge moving uh -huh. forward. So we do a lot of education and try to get people to understand when it might be appropriate. I bet you're getting the calls money. about uh, their air conditioner not working. We're going to have those. Um, although a couple years ago, we did have an air conditioner that uh, overheated and caught on fire, and we did cover that. So huh. that was a, a fire. So fire. It didn't just get old. <laughs> and you, you do sell the fire insurance, things like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. For business, home, health, the whole thing. We don't do anything with health insurance. Oh, okay. um, we, that's specialty, um, especially with some of the changes that happen in the market. So we refer out for that. Uh, but anything that's in the what we call property casualty realm, so mm -hmm. we're, we're covering liability and property, we take care of. Wonderful. And let's uh, give the who, what, where's again. It's next Thursday. What time? Yeah, so it goes from 5 to 7 p.m. Stop okay. by anytime during during that um we'll, we'll have the food and the flags yeah. um i forgot to mention we will have potato potato food truck is they seem to be pretty that. popular these days they, they are and so the they will be out there um so from five to seven on next thursday that's going to be the 13th um and like i said stop by anytime it's kids friendly so bring, bring the kiddos we'll have some little arts and crafts and little toys for them um, and bring your uh, flag because yeah, they can get re they can get uh, you know just whipping in the wind uh, they get kind of frazzled. Oh yeah, I and mean, we're starting to have people that just come come every year and yeah. they they bring the old one and pick yeah. up their new and we're, we're happy to provide that service. You're doing good things. Uh, so. Mariah Davis, Oakview Insurance Flag Day is actually the following day, mm -hmm. which is also President Trump's birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think he'll be back from England by then. Uh, maybe. Too, too bad I couldn't get him to come to the event. So. <laughs> <laughs> Make you the center great again. How about that? <laughs> Mariah Davis, Oakview Insurance, thank you for being part of the program, and thank you for being a great member of our community. Thank you, John. Thanks for having us on.